Conspiracy theorists are right about one thing. Secret societies do exist, and they're pretty scary. Watch your back, your neighbor just might be one of them. We start off our top five list with the Freemasons. They are the secret society that discovered a huge treasure and hid it in historical monuments around the United States. That's also the plot to National Treasure. Keep watching if you want to know what they really do. Number five, the Freemasons. Did you know that the Masons actually faked the moon landing? And they were also responsible for murdering Abraham Lincoln. Well, of course, this has never been proven, but these are just some of the theories surrounding this powerful and secret society. But who are they? I, of course, have some real and factual things to tell you, although I know that the theories are way more exciting. Freemasonry is the world's oldest and largest fraternity. It's not really a secret, obviously, since we're here talking about it, but the group is very exclusive and uses secret handshakes to recognize each other. I read in an article the other day by a journalist who was allowed into a Mason meeting, but not the whole thing. The members told him it's nothing like in the movies. They get together to talk about community service and promote intellectual and cultural activities. They told the journalist that they can't actually talk about politics or religion in the meetings, but... Then they kicked him out, so we'll never really know what happens. The Freemasons started in medieval Europe as a guild for stonemasons, the people who designed buildings and cut stone. They started becoming more and more powerful and copied some of the symbols and traditions from the Knights Templar from the Crusades. The meetings are full of symbols, signs, and ancient rituals. The all-seeing eye on the dollar bill is said to be a Masonic symbol, but did you know that it actually comes from the ancient Egyptians and Hebrews? However, there are a couple of odd things about the dollar that I'll tell you about in a little bit. Just wait until we get to the Illuminati. So the question is, how did a group that was created by stonemasons become a secret society that is now blamed for masterminding global events? Well, the symbolism and lessons that they supposedly teach and the fact that they don't share what they actually do, of course, is going to make them seem suspicious. In the past, they were trying to bring education to the general public and were probably forced to meet in secret because they were going against the teachings of the Catholic Church. In fact, the Roman Catholic Church actually forbids Catholics from joining the society under pain of excommunication. Ooh. A long time ago, Pope Clement found out about the Masons and how they were trying to spread knowledge and freedom among the people, probably because somebody blabbed. I'm sure it wasn't all as innocent as it seems, and the Pope didn't like it at all. He said it was some sort of satanic cult that went against God. I could probably also go on and on about the conspiracy theories surrounding the Catholic Church, so I'll save that for another video. The main symbol for the Freemasons are the square and compasses, which are tools used by Masons and architects. The letter G stands for God or geometry or both. Each tool and shape is used to teach a lesson, but don't ask me what they are because I have no idea. Let me know if you do. That, my friends, is probably how conspiracy theories arise with all the symbols, secret handshaking, and whatnot. The Masons have been a powerful force in American history, and people say that the Masons were responsible for causing the American Revolution, especially since most of the Founding Fathers were members. Over the years, the Masons' power started becoming more noticeable since many famous and wealthy people were members and proud of it. Fun fact, the first third party in the United States was actually the anti-Masonic party who was getting worried that the Masons were taking over. They actually lost the 1828 presidential election to Andrew Jackson, who was a proud Mason. It actually started when a man from New York broke his vow of secrecy to the Masons and then disappeared. Andrew Jackson is the president they're taking off the $20 bill and replacing with Harriet Tubman, just so you know. What's interesting to me is that for a secret society, the Masons were pretty famous. Everyone knew about them and a lot of politicians and famous people were members and proudly talked about it. It's like they had to let everyone know that they were in a secret society, but nobody else was allowed to join. They had to talk about it a little bit, otherwise no one would care. Here are some famous members. Mozart, Theodore Roosevelt, Mark Twain, Winston Churchill, Henry Ford, John Wayne, and Houdini. Who would have thought all these guys would have so much in common? Number four, Skull and Bones. Now this one's pretty cool, I have to say. The Order of Skull and Bones holds the title of the oldest student secret society in the United States. People say that it is a branch of the Illuminati and also controls the CIA. Pretty powerful accusations, which the CIA denies, of course. The CIA always denies everything, whether it's true or not, so that doesn't really mean anything. 
In the 2004 U.S. presidential election, both the Democratic and Republican nominees George Bush and John Kerry were alumni of Skull and Bones. George W. Bush wrote in his autobiography, In my senior year, I joined Skull and Bones, a secret society so secret I can't say anything more. When someone asked John Kerry what it meant that he and Bush were both Bones men, he said, Not much, because it's a secret. Wonderful. It's been around since 1832, which is pretty old for the U.S. Not if you're from anywhere else in the world where old is over a thousand years or something. But anyway, Skull and Bones does a good job of keeping quiet about what they do. In any secret society, it always depends on how well they can keep a secret. They select new members every spring as part of Yale University's Tap Day. This is when Skull and Bones members and other secret societies go around literally tapping people on the shoulder as an invitation to join the society. I think this can get confusing really fast. How do you know which secret society is tapping you? Anyway, Skull and Bones also uses Masonic rituals during the meetings they hold in the building that they call the tomb. Just what I picture, very cloak and dagger. They started keeping the names of the members a secret in the 1970s. In their spare time, apparently, they like to steal the skulls of famous people, like the Apache warrior Geronimo, and hiding them somewhere inside the tomb. Nice guys, super classy. Yale is quick to reply that the tomb is not on university property, so they don't know anything about it. Some famous members, John Kerry, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and William Howard Taft. Fun fact, Taft was the 27th and fattest president of the United States, whose father co-founded Skull and Bones. Hmm, notice the pattern of fathers and sons here? And presidents? I'll just leave it at that. Number three, the Rosicrucian Order. Who? Exactly. You probably haven't heard much about this group, but they are the sworn enemy of the Illuminati. Yeah. They are believed to have emerged in the 1600s or earlier, it's hard to say. They love the powers of the occult and bring together elements of Egyptian and Hebrew wisdom and symbolism, just like the Masons. This group is super secret, and the stories and theories can get kind of confusing, so bear with me. Okay, originally the group was so secret that only eight people knew about it. So in the 1600s, somebody published some anonymous manifestos to let people know about this group. Supposedly, there was a German doctor and mystic named Christian Rosenkreuz, get it? Rosenkreuz? Rose? Cross? Who traveled and studied in the Middle East, learning medicine and alchemy and things like that. He tried to bring his knowledge back to Europe, but the years went by and traveling wasn't what it is now. It took years to get around back then. Since he couldn't get back to Germany, he created the Rosicrucians with the eight members that I was telling you about. Each member was a doctor and a sworn bachelor, and they undertook an oath to heal the sick for free, maintain a secret fellowship, and find a replacement for himself before he died. That way, they could keep the knowledge safe from the Catholic Church and the rest of society who probably wouldn't be able to handle it. Since it's likely that much of the knowledge about hospitals and bathing came from the Moors, medieval European society would probably have killed them first and asked questions later. Their symbol is a rosy cross used by the Templars before them, and it is said to even predate Christianity. The symbol, I mean, not the secret society. So you know all the rumors surrounding the Illuminati of murders and plots to destroy the government and religion? It was actually the Rosicrucians who were the first ones to start spying on the members of the Illuminati and accuse them of all of their crimes. Which is when all the conspiracy theories of the Illuminati started. Coincidence? I think not. When the manifestos came out, people tried to contact the secret society from the pamphlets, including Rene Descartes, William Shakespeare, and the philosopher and scientist Sir Francis Bacon. In fact, by some accounts, Sir Francis Bacon was not only actually one of the secret society members, but he may have written the manifestos himself. Confused yet? Some Rosicrucians claim he wrote Shakespeare's works as well. What? Famous members, we think. Isaac Newton, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, Walt Disney, and Napoleon Bonaparte. Number two, the Bilderberg Group. This secret organization is different from the others since it isn't really a club or official secret society. The Bilderberg Group is a name given to a circle of around 120 highly influential people who meet each year 
in private with strong government sponsorship and military security to discuss global issues. According to the Bilderberg Conference website, it is the annual forum for informal, off-the-record discussions about global trends and the major issues facing the world. Wow, that really clears it up, doesn't it? Attendance at these world-class conferences is strictly by invitation only. Invitation by whom? The first meeting was held in 1954 at the Hotel Bilderberg in the Netherlands to help improve relations between Western Europe and the United States. See, here's the hotel. Now the hotel changes, and as you can see, they would rather be a little bit more isolated. Right there. European politicians, princes, and prime ministers organized the event along with the CIA and the US presidential advisors. There were two guests from each nation, each representing a liberal and conservative point of view, and 11 Americans. Everyone had a great time, and they decided to make it an annual event. Yay! I think it's a good thing, right? Well, everyone that's invited thinks it's great since they all say they can finally speak honestly to one another, which is kind of a scary thought. But since it's so secret, how do we know what they're doing? They might be planning future assassinations or playing croquet for all we know. Who knows what exactly happens, especially since the press is prohibited from entering and also the attendees are forbidden under oath to share any details. So, conspiracy theorists can have a field day with this one. Some accuse the Bilderberg Group of conspiring to impose capitalist domination and others of using the opportunity to establish a world government. Here are some famous attendees. Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, what is Bill Gates doing there? And officials from the World Bank. Hmm, maybe they all planned that sex scandal with Strauss Kahn and the hotel maid. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should Google it. Now for the most dangerous and powerful secret society, but first, which secret society would you rather belong to? Number one, the Order of the Illuminati. I save the best for last. If anyone is to blame for the murder of JFK and John Lennon, it's the Illuminati. Okay, not really, but the Illuminati has been blamed for almost every unexplained event in history as well as wars and revolutions. Many US presidents, Warren Buffett, Madonna, and even Katy Perry are alleged to be part of the modern day Illuminati. Recently, they have also been accused of murdering Prince. Why? I'm not sure to tell you the truth. There are many groups called Illuminati throughout history, but what most people refer to is the Order of the Illuminati that was an elite organization founded in Bavaria focused on enlightenment. It was originally founded as a secret society in 1776, keep this date in mind, with the goal of bringing about spiritual and political change. The organization's members included forward-thinking and influential leaders from the top tiers of society who opposed general superstition, religious oppression, and political abuse. So far, sounds good to me. The group grew quickly as progressive politicians and influential intellectuals joined and it became a powerful political force throughout the world. That is, of course, until the Pope ordered they disband. Yeah, the same Pope that hated the Masons, too. And the Bavarian government made it a criminal offense to join or support the Order of the Illuminati. Many conspiracy theorists claim that there are symbols on the dollar bill that represent the Illuminati. Let's look first at the Great Seal with the Eagle. The coat of arms above the eagle's head has 13 stars. The number 13 is supposed to represent the original 13 colonies of the United States. From a darker point of view, the number 13 is evil and the 13 stars are formed in the shape of a hexagram, a demonic symbol. Remember that most of these societies are accused of trying to destroy religion and control all things from the shadows. The number 13 is repeated all over the dollar bill. 13 stars in the constellation over the eagle's head, 13 stripes in the shield, 13 arrows held in the eagle's left talon, 13 letters in E Pluribus Unum on the scroll carried by the eagle, and 13 layers to the unfinished pyramid. Theorists believe this repetition of the number 13 also demonstrates the power of 13 American families that dominated politics, among them Washington, Solomon, and Jefferson during the time of the SEAL's creation. Each of these families allegedly contained members of the Illuminati. Back to the unfinished pyramid, at the bottom is the year 1776 in Roman numerals. 
Again, this refers to the year the Declaration of Independence was signed. Theorists believe that this is also a reference to the year the Bavarian Illuminati was founded. Crazy coincidence? Floating just above the unfinished pyramid sits the most notorious of all symbols associated with the Illuminati, the Eye of Providence, watching over everything. You can also see in Latin, Nuvus Ordo Seclorum, New Order of the Ages. What do you guys think? Some of the conspiracy theories swirling around the Illuminati include that they were responsible for the French Revolution, multiple disease outbreaks, and in general, mastermind events to control the world and gain political power to establish a new world order. Since they are so secretive and no one really knows for sure what happened to them, conspiracy theorists maintain that the Illuminati survived and the organization still exists today. Check out this disaster that was worse than the Titanic or find out more about ridiculous crimes that got people sent to prison in Australia. Make sure to subscribe, we have tons of videos coming up.